Call of Duty Zombies. Now I'm gonna take a guess here and say you probably thought of a Black Ops 1 map, right? And I don't blame you. It was a staple of the COD Zombies franchise and looking back on it, maybe- The theater map! You realize that Everybody it really felt like a World it. of War 2.0. Just not about a world being at war. No, what I mean is World at War Zombies Plus. When Treyarch could flex those bulging creative muscles due to the success of the previous Zombies mode, yes. carrying over the same style and gameplay, but improving it- World at War was so popular and so iconic, like so many people were waiting for Kino. How old was I? 10 years old. <laughs> so one thing that is very apparent Treyarch took over with them from World at War to Black Ops 1 Zombies was its horror. Yes. Zombies in the first Black Ops definitely had a way of game. And you don't really see this nowadays. Black Ops 1 was that perfect combination of horror and fantasy. Under my skin. And although I was younger when I played it, I think a lot of these feelings can still be felt now to a certain degree and were felt for several reasons. Much like when we crashed in the middle of a field, went to an asylum, we yep. stranded in a swamp in Japan and wound up at a Nazi facility where this whole mess happened. I made a video talking about how scary World at War Zombies Really video. Was, and I had no doubt in my mind that at some point I'd be talking about the chilling experience that is Black Ops 1's third game of mode. Course. And that time is now. Arguably the best storyline in all of Call of Duty Zombies. I am incredibly excited. Exceptional gamer. Now, if you haven't watched Let's the World War video, I strongly recommend you do. As that video is going to give you a lot more context to this one, I've put it on an iCard here for you and I'll link it in the description as well. Yes, I'm watching sir. the World War video and then this Go one is check out the exceptional cohesive, gamer. I digress. Please. Join me as we take a look at the horrors of Black Ops 1 Zombies. Let's see it. Yeah, even the main menu. Best main menu in all of gaming. I'll say it. Nothing beats Okay, I know this seems weird, but I want to start off with the main menu. The main menu of Black Ops 1 is Gorgeous. one of the best I've ever seen. Yes. As far as the campaign goes, it fits the cryptic theme of that perfectly. You, Mason, the player, are strapped to a chair in a mysterious room and have the silhouette of an interrogator who you can't see behind a glass window. He's looking down at you asking what the numbers mean, whilst you're hooked up to an electric machine that's going to shock you. There are TVs playing- You said it was Cuba. What happened to Cuba? <laughs> It's so iconic, man. It's so iconic. More campaign-related things about JFK and Vietnam, etc. However, the main menu takes a darker turn and manages to match the mystery that the campaign brings when you select zombie. Was Castro involved? <laughs> The color of the room changes to a thick I red, and the interrogator know. walks away out of his office. The TV. This whole main menu is a, its own game in and of itself. That's how amazing BO1 was. He's now displaying footage of grotesque zombies, decaying bodies, and experimentation oh footage. Goodness. Whilst you're absorbing all of that and thinking about what the hell you're looking at, what's Peach. interesting though is when you look up at the window and see the interrogator come back. I kind of makes me wish that in the Black Ops 3 Frozen Forest main menu that you would be able to have the same thing where you could get up and walk around. I wish there was like a little main menu game like that, man. Because BO1 was just so goaded with that. They shouldn't have stopped doing that trend. Well, it's safe to say you won't be asking you questions anymore. <laughs> yes, our boy has been turned into a hungry, ravaging zombie and is yes. slamming his cold hands on the window to try and reach you, who is completely bound in that chair. This ran a chill down my spine when I first saw this. Yeah. In fact, it still does sometimes. When you look back at the TVs and you're seeing all of this, what honestly looks like found footage sometimes, feels as though it's making you For witness real, what you're actually- real, like this stuff where he's writing on the- like, what? Like, it freaks me out, man. Even when I was a kid, I was mortified, but even as a 25-year-old man, Nah, I'm still freaked out, man. Inform you of the map, which I think is genius. The silhouette of the zombie at the window I is still know. persistent on reaching you, and the thuds of the window echo through the room. All that's been accompanied amazing. by the absolute slapper of a song that is damned by Brian Dewey. Adding that creepy yet intrigued yes. feeling, this game- Met him in person. He is absolutely amazing. He did all of the music, even for the recent Call of Duties. Call of Duty- Treyarch sound team stays on top, goaded. And the zombies mode before it brings to the table. Yeah, like, iconic. They make bangers. They don't miss. All Not of these elements come together and a hopelessness dawns on you. And this is just the main menu. This room is freaking know, me out now man. and I can see some cracks through that window. So let's get out of here and take a look at our first map. I know. And then also like how when you start the campaign, it just like almost zooms you into the TV. Like one of the best settings for a game ever. To this day, the best main menu ever. So goaded. And Kino's home, the best zombie. Starting off with one time. of the scarier maps here, Kino de Toten, translated to Theater of the yeah. Dead from German, was once a, believe it or not, theater in Berlin during the 1960s. It was yes, once a place sir. people used to gather together and enjoy something. But we, we literally saw a video of found footage of somebody in like 2020 going up and finding a theater for, like similar to Kino and like going up in the rafters and stuff. And I'm like, bruh. Couldn't be me. <laughs> this map it's been taken over by Group 935 and overrun with our all too familiar undead mates. Upon spawning in, you can immediately tell that this place has seen better days. Oh, <laughs> wait, yeah. wait, 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 there's something I need to do first. Are you freaking kidding me? No power. Bruh. <laughs>
I mean, it certainly would have. Theaters like these were filled with rich patterns. Diverse it art. makes you feel like you're in an abandoned theater, like abandoned house, and you're like not supposed to be there. Like almost like occult vibes. That's what I felt when I first played this map. Architecture and regal, bright colours. But now it isn't the jaw-dropping place it used to be. Yeah. The rich patterns have started to scuff and fade away, the diverse architecture is falling to bits. Hell, yep. some sections have fully been destroyed and those regal, bright colours are now drab and decaying. The Nazi flags all around this map are a stark reminder that even though there's no alive Nazis in the area, their horrific impact from the things they were doing here is- And then in BO3 they've made the Iron Cross, still right? a heavy so... weight that you can't ignore, no matter how hard you might try. Yeah, oh yeah, true. there's blood everywhere too. Yep. The place literally is falling to pieces when the power is turned on and makes a loud as it collapses. It's safe to say Kino de Toten already sets the scene to be a place long past its prime and turn into something much more sinister and bleak. And we're about to go deeper to find whatever lo That's a very big theme though in BO1, just with all the zombie maps. So like five, you get that same feeling. You're coming in after the event happened. Ascension, the same thing. Call the Dead, the same thing. Shangri-La, the same thing. Moon, you literally blow up the earth. The first time you're on time for an event, is when you blow up the whole earth, like, make it make sense. Long abandoned <laughs> secrets and scares are lying in here. That's so So, funny. this is a zombies game. And it's no surprise that much like World at War, they're coming from the barriers again. You can see into other parts of the theatre through these barriers that have been completely obliterated, and it really makes you feel like you're being buried in all of this rubble. Out of all of the barriers in this map- It would have been so cool if, like, the floors fell through and you would, like, sometimes fall to different areas in the map. That would have been sick. Some die rise type of stuff. Uh, there is one that stood out to me that used to give me the heebie-jeebies, though. It was none other than the infamous Void Barrier, as I'm oh, calling it I now. The know. Void Barrier, for those who don't know, is just in pitch black. As a kid, you look in there like, what's in there? <laughs> room, and if you look into it, it is just complete darkness. No furniture, oh, objects, or anything, really. It's pretty wow. ominous looking, to say the least, and I never will know if this is an intentional thing that the developers oh, added, but if this was some sort of lighting glitch that never managed. Because you wouldn't see them until the hands would literally go right onto the barrier. Honestly, whoever designed that, a trailer, genius to get patched. Genius. I can't lie, it used to freak me out a little when I was oh, younger, yeah. and it's one of those strange details that adds a spooky charm to this map in particular. 100%. I can't tell you exactly why it freaked me out, it just was one of those things where it's very unknown, and it feels well. so out of place. This whole window barrier, iconic. Iconic. Why can we not see anything? What is Iconic. hiding behind there? I'm sure really? it is just a lighting bug that was never patched, but it does feel like you are staring barrier. into an endless void Iconic. nonetheless. Let's be honest, going to this place is probably a one-way ticket to the back room, so maybe stay out of that <laughs> Literally. I what was past the barriers and around the map where Legit, we... Legit, the back rooms could have been on Kino de Toad. We would never have known. Can't see, and staring into some barriers and thinking about the horrors down there used to give me the chills. When you're going through the motions of a zombie's march, you've turned on the power, you'll notice that when you're being teleported to pack a bunch, you can see a projector since you go to the projector room. And if you have some reels, it can actually be interacted with to be able to put them in and play them on the actual theater screen. Should have been a whole easter egg. I really wish they spent more time on this part of the map because this map was supposed to also have a chainsaw bro. It could like, play what? a variety of things such as a horde of zombies or even an eye staring right at you. It makes know, you feel very creepy. uneasy although I would say that this is more of a background scare something that just adds a little bit. Treyarch how did you record this? Fess up bro. Of flavor to everything <laughs> else around right you. Now. But even that background horror has a surprisingly good amount of depth to it with this film reel that is the horde of zombies. Now not only is this a nightmare fuel I think seeing this, especially when I was younger or if I'm like in a dark room now, has this weird effect on me where it makes me feel very uneasy. The black and white image, the constant flickering between different images, the fact that the- It's because this came out in a time where images were blurry half the time on the internet, like 480p was the standard I remember, and then 720p came out on YouTube and everybody's like, whoa, HD video, right? But like, that's what made old horror, is that like, blurry you can't tell what's going on thing that you can't identify Right. These are not in-game models, but it looks like yeah. a real photograph, and the way the hands are up in the air, it's as though they're like coming for you, they're trying to grab you, and of course, how could I forget, the eyes. The, the zombies' eyes. eyes are one of the most distinct yep. features of Call of Duty Zombies. The human face recognizes human faces in everything. We're just designed and programmed like that, and so when you see eyes on something that your brain can't identify, freaks you out literally it's so much so that other games have copied it to this day it gives yeah. them that scary supernatural feeling and i couldn't imagine seeing yeah. those eyes on a person as they begin slowly shambling towards you now when i said that this looks like a real photo that's because it is here's the zombies here and here's the original image the original image is actually of german soldiers surrendering hence why that is so mad to think that this image made it on a zombies map man and they're zombified like what? Why they have their hands up in the air. There's something that about the way Treyarch changed these photos while staying weirdly true to these original ones. And of course, the fact that they're real photos that makes this much, much darker.
Wow. Taking a deeper look here, the place that you get spooky. these reels used to freak me out and still kind of does. There are a variety of places you can get teleported to after leaving Pack-a-Punch before heading back to spawn, which include the conference room from Five, a dentist's office, and two versions of Samantha's room. One of these versions is just like a normal child's room, albeit there are some things that look off and gives a really uncomfortable vibe, such as the teddy bears and the monkey bomb on the bed. And I was always freaked out that the toy set was made out of wood. Like that bottom one. Why wood? Like it, and it looks like it's like wood that you would have just found in like a scrapyard too. I think that's what makes it so free. Then there's the other version of her room. If you get teleported into this room, yeah, you'll yeah, notice it this. looks <laughs> much scarier than the other rooms. It has a thick red hue to it, and there's yeah, the like why is it wood, fam? Load it everywhere. This room feels a so lot more claustrophobic than others. There's that. a big pile of bloody teddies. The place looks like an absolute state. And not to mention the teddy bear with the beaming red eye fixating on you. Also, this teddy bear looks a bit bigger than I would have liked. If you're in this place and you have a keen ear, you can actually hear Samantha weeping by the sounds of it, which really doesn't help with any of this stuff. And not to mention the ambience in this room. Granted, the ambience in the normal version of Samantha's room is pretty chilling, but this is. It makes me think Treyarch knew some some stuff, <laughs> like some stuff IRL. A different what are y'all? So, not ladies and gentlemen, us? we are about to do the brown pants speed run. I'm gonna play it for you now. I know, bro. Like, Trey, what are you not telling us, man? Freaky. And they don't put stuff like this in COD Zombies nowadays, you know? I'm just glad that we're only in here for a very short amount of time because the True. overall atmosphere is not comfortable to be in. Unlike yeah. World at War's maps taking place in desolate locations, isolated from everything else, Kina de Toten is actually in a city and you can see other buildings surround. It's so weird because even though the map has one of the brightest, most beautiful, like, daytime skyboxes, like, it's daytime outside, it's nice, the map itself is so dark still and terrifying. I think that's what ex makes Keynote or Toten excel so well. Because, like, you go in the alleyway and you're like, whoa, it's daytime? Like, what? Going outside is a delightful experience yeah. in this map anyway. But congratulations, now that you're outside, you are one step closer to touching grass. Okay, come on, man. What is this about, bro? <laughs> Literally me. With my POV, bro. Funnily enough, the alleyway in Kino is by far one of the most treacherous parts of this map. Yeah, that's right. Just because you're outside doesn't mean you're safe. This seems to indicate to the player that despite being outside in broad daylight, your situation isn't exactly getting any better or safer. Ironically, speedrunners would use this place as a training spot, but whatever. The buildings around the map when you go outside are as withered. I mean, yeah, nobody would have thought that this spot would have been the best. Because I remember back in the day, people would go in the alley like when they were about to die. And they would be like, bro, that's it. I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing left. But now it's like the main strat. And decrepit as the theater you're in. The whole environment feels like a ghost town. And with the zombies shambling around, making creepy ass noises, the echo through the streets, hearing them come for you, it gives not just a feeling of dread, but makes you feel completely closed in and stranded in a place you shouldn't be in. Overall, it has that abandoned area vibe that you see people explore on YouTube. And I love it for that. Gazing into the streets of Kino gives off that GM construct kind of vibe, where you're walking around that- It really, see, exactly. Like, this is what Kino or Toten nailed. That, like- Old horror blurry 480p aesthetic dog. That aesthetic keynote or tone absolutely plays on your own, and everything park. feels so incredibly so off. True. And they both share that liminal space feel, very out yes. of touch with reality, and you feel yes. like something's always watching you. It's quite spot on exception. Keynote or Toten, much like World at Wars, Verrocked has blood. Lots yeah. of blood. Something I've come to notice with the map that adds another further layer of horror and depth to the seemingly simple map are the bloodstains and how some of them end up telling a story. Bloodstains protruding from barriers, leading yep. to places you can't quite see past or coming into the map itself and seeing what we can only assume. And then that Grim Reaper ghost up there as well, tying in the whole storyline. Black Ops 1 was exceptional, bro. The storytelling in the map, the show but don't tell, perfection, man. It was once somebody's dying struggle, all before the zombies took over. You can see the desperation in their attempt of escape and it's creepy as hell. This smeared handprint here on the wall is a great example. I mean, look at this. There was clearly someone on the run here and yeah. they didn't quite make an escape. It really goes to show how menacing- And, and you literally have to go by this hallway multiple times just to even play the map. Savage, like, these Nazi zombies immerses really you right And there's so it. many examples of bloodstains like this around Kino de Toten. In fact, not even just Kino de Toten, like all of Black Ops 1 zombies. Oh, with yeah. your mind filling in the blanks about these kinds of things, whether- They really stopped doing it with BO2. I think transit was like such a big game changer in terms of what the mode was going to become. It is, and what happened to them makes your brain spiral down this rabbit hole of deep, morbid thought. And whenever yep. I see a game get you to think in that way, I can't help but admire it. There's these certain bloodstains that resemble a grim reaper. I know it's not yep. just me that's noticed this, but I remember playing when I was younger and I would see it and I would think, that guy looks like this guy. But I it's also interesting because that grim reaper is also in the campaign. And so 
it kind of, I guess, hints the future tie-in of zombies campaign. Zombies and campaigns. I've also seen comments saying that they've seen the same thing without me ever mentioning it. And I don't think I need to describe to you who the Grim Reaper is. But with Bloodstains being in that shape, it looks really menacing and intimidating. And it kind of made me feel like I was being watched in some way. And overall, it just fits with the theme of undead people. The farting golems that you've seen around the map are known as Nova Crawlers. I'm not searching farting golem for an image for this because I feel like what I'll find there is going to be some- What is that? People looking this up, dog. What are y'all doing with your time? The reason Nova's in their name is because they were made from Nova 6 that is seen in the campaign for this game. There's even some chalk scribbles on the wall at spawn literally warning you, although subtly, about these fiends. It reads, Beware of the Six, with the Six being the Nova 6. Yeah, I think you get it. These crawlers were failed experiments made from- My gosh, bro, this trailer, if you saw the Zombie Labs trailer for Moon, this freaked me out. I still, to this day- think this is one of the best trailers Call of Duty has ever released. This trailer was horrifying, and it was for the release of Moon. Moon was goaded, man. that contain the Nova 6 gas oh, in them. When they're shot by the player, the gas nah, explodes man. out of them, blurring the player's vision. Not being able to see Like, how does that 2010 trailer look better than what we're getting in 2023? Up with such sharp turns and tight choke know. points that you'll need to run through is a great way to build suspense man. for the player. In fact, taking away any of the senses away from a player or any person engaging in horror media has always been a trick used, not because it's cheap, because it's effective, man, and it's how it actually works with real life horror. So literally, I mean, Outlast is such a great example. But because it's effective, these yes. strange beings crawl over to you to enter the map via breaking the rooftops in certain areas, destroying the place even more to be able to come and get you. Their appearance is actually very unsettling. They have an extremely malnourished and slender figure. You can see how strange their bone structure looks, and they have a pale skin color, a huge gaping mouth with sharp teeth, and Trek no eyes or any so other facial goated, features. Man. And how can we forget about their long, sharp claws? These strange like, imps move around on all fours, claws. like four-legged spiders, and when you think about it that way and you see them moving like that, it makes the hairs on you stand up a little bit. It just looks I so know, like, as a kid... Kid, I, I remember seeing this and be like, oh, what is that? It natural, but it it's a big spider, bro. <laughs> that shocking if that's all they did. I feel bad for the unsuspecting player that managed to see them cling to a wall and start I crawling know. down the sides of the map out of the holes in the roof where it collapsed yeah, or no, where they you. broke in. So you've been teleported into this theater and from everything we've covered so far, it's safe to say it sure looks creepy. But what about how this map sounds? Yeah. I mean, literally, it's so funny because it's literally just the brightest daytime. I think, honestly, that's a testament to how good Kino is. Like, it's still scary despite being in the daytime. Well, you really thought we would be in a ghost town, huddled up in an abandoned, decaying theater that was turned into a Group 935 facility and then overrun with zombies and it wouldn't have any eerie noises? Yeah. <laughs> Kino's exactly. noises and ambience make this ghostly location feel like it's truly haunted and abandoned. On my second Call of Duty Zombies iceberg, wait, wait. So many iconic, literal sounds come from Kino to Totem. Literally. This so isn't many. a plug, but check it out if you haven't already. I covered yes. on that video entry called Kino Ambience Incredible. Anxiety Frequencies. This entry hit me so hard that I went back to the 9th of November 2010 because <laughs> out of all the maps with creepy ambience, besides World at War Zombies maps, I always remember Kino's ambience noise as being genuinely scary to hear, and much like the game's predecessor, it made me shit my pants. Seriously, listen to this ambience. I don't like that, man. It reminds me of Saw, bro. Literally, that's why I think Saw zombies on customs did so well. There's so many of these sounds. Of these sound noises like just it. trigger my fight or flight response in my lizard brain. And so with the already know, withered and right? ominous visuals of the map, these sounds infiltrate in my ears is not pleasant. The creaks, <laughs> the sparks of electricity, the thuds all come together to complement the aesthetics of the map to make you feel suspense that something is near you or is about to happen to you. Sending this minor feeling of disorientation in the sense that just as you're starting to doze off, starting to feel comfortable in this map, it throws one of these noises at you and that primal fear kicks Bang in. Bang underscore zero three. The cod zombies equivalent of the Minecraft cave noises. Even the humming in the perk machines in a near silent room shows how oh, desolate man. this places yeah yeah literally just that's so true like the perks weren't just literal machines that were plopped in with a jingle like they were dynamic they had different sounds and stuff i remember back when like maps like mob of the dead did that and they would like make these haunting versions of the perk machines my gosh the level of detail they put back into zombies, oh my gosh, was mad. But Kino de Toten can somehow make you feel like something is wrong. Like a yep. dark secret hiding within everything you've already experienced so far, which is everything I've talked about. Despite it being a zombie breakout and on later rounds being cramped with zombies flooding through the theater, there is no better example of this idea than the infamous dressing room. Oh now, my don't gosh. get me wrong, it is an already spooky looking room, but beyond yeah. the bounds of the map, through a barrier you can't see too far past, you can hear this when you approach it. Oh, I know. Who is it? Who, cool, bro? 
it can't be a zombie because it's like it sounds too precise, you know? Oh boy, this is really unsettling. Yeah. Despite there being no visuals, we have hard, loud knocks, almost desperate in its delivery. Come to think of it, I think the dimly lit, tight room we can see where the knocking is coming from serves as a sort of set dressing for this little experience. The art of let your mind make- It's so crazy, because yeah, like, honestly, it doesn't even look like this belongs in Keynote or Totem, bro. This looks like a dead of the night map, bro. Horror. When Yo, something horror. isn't presented in some cases of horror media, books usually use this a lot and to great effect. Our minds will always imagine something much scarier than what could ever be shown via films or illustrations. Have there been exceptions? Yeah. Probably. Although they don't come to mind straight away, but with the dressing room knocking, this is exactly what we see, or here, I guess. It leads down to that line of thinking I mentioned earlier. It's just that idea of building suspense. Keynote or Totem was a masterclass. Yeah, with the bloodstains. Well, you're thinking as to what it could be all about. Who is in there? What is in there? Why the knocking? Why there? Yeah. It's something that exactly. we have no answer to and probably never will, leaving us only with our own conclusion. Another mystery that we have never got a concrete answer for in this strange theater are the pods. No, not, not them. If you head over <laughs> to the stage, you can find these pods sat around, and at first they may just seem like props or some sort of storage, until you go and take a look at what's inside uh, of them. Well, we know what's in there, bro. This still is mad creepy. But yeah, these are what the Nova 6 crawlers evolve into. Like, I guess the 115, like, deletes the features on their face. Oh, it's freaky, though. I know, it looks like it's about to jump scare you. And it ends up being you. quite a shock, and much like the knocking, yeah. I can't even wrap my head around what the hell this is even about. Yeah. Why are they there? It's a detail that you can go years without even noticing, but it shows such a good level of attention to detail to this map. Treyarch throwing in little scares like these for you to find in the map is a detail that I love, and Kino is a shining example of just how cool- They need to do this more. I feel like a lot of zombie maps feel dead because a lot of the areas don't really have even something iconic to remember them about, you know? Creamy. It is when these easter eggs are implemented. These zombies pods didn't have to be put in, but considering they are just sat there, gives the map quite a foreboding aura, making you think deeper about this abandoned theater. But hey, yeah. at least you found the last meteor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the sound you hear the most, bro. I'm Keynote or Toten, let me tell you. <laughs> It's safe to say I love how rich some of the scares are in Kino to Totem. It makes oh, me think, yeah. hey, you know what? This seems like it could be a world at war map. And that's exactly- And literally it was. And it goes to show like the true horror was back in World at War. Like they have never even beat what they tried to establish back in the old maps. The, the case, first five. Was supposed to have first Kino five as its fourth DLC map. But Activision said to Treyarch that this release was too close to Modern Warfare 2's and didn't want any attention being taken away from its release. And so yep. it was saved for Black Ops 1 and the rest was history. This explains why the map is arguably one of the most horror-based zombies maps on this game. Are even out of every Call of Duty game. Oh, and I forgot to mention there are mannequins too in the dressing room. I, I think they did a great job of mirroring the horror in this map on 5. I think 5 nailed that aspect as well. Oh. Hey, mannequins. Yeah. Kino de Toten has that theme of hollowness and abandonment. The way the wind blows right through the building, seamlessly going through one hole in the wall and straight out the other, as if there's already nothing there to begin with. This place, the city around it, is well and truly dead. This map, if it wasn't made obvious already, seems to focus on a ghost town type of feel. Like you're exploring an abandoned building you really shouldn't be in, with dark, twisted secrets. It was once a place of joy and entertainment, and now it sits there, broken and bustling, with the undead as it decays, much like the corpses of those Nazi zombies. It's like, imagine having two cousins that are younger, and you want to scare them and you're like bruh put them on keynote or tone because you're like forcing them to be in an abandoned house that's how it felt like when i played it as a kid with my older cousins bro <laughs> so honestly yeah Kino does nail that honestly this Open my eyes more to seeing it in a different light for sure. Five. A map that I... Wait, wait, wait. Classic. Why is it called five? Oh, because a pentagon has five, five sides. sides. And, and the yeah. map is set at the... Ah. I'm not going to lie. I'm like the smartest kid ever when I figured that one out. Five is a map. I'm glad they didn't call it pentagon. That would have been bad. Five was a way better title. That, to me, feels like a haunted house. And that may sound strange because it's the it Pentagon, and maybe that house. title should go to another yeah. map like Kino, and whilst Kino certainly looks like a haunted house, the reason I say this about Five is that the flow of the map and overall structure makes me think that this bonus- The cigars were just so cool. I remember just when you see the smoke coming out of it, and you're like, bruh, it feels like the people were just here. This map plays you know? like you were in a haunted house. You'll see what I mean as the video goes on. Five, much like Kino to Toten, is claustrophobic as hell, but unlike other maps, it plays on the feeling that the walls are closed in on you and that everything is getting tighter also can we remember just how freaking cool and just seeing all the old paintings from the american history just looking down on you like do good son make sure to get round 100 brother <laughs> like i'm just like bro i'm 12. <laughs> that opening cutscene was for time and the world do not stand still change is the law of life those who look only to the past or the present are certain iconic to the man People being awesome. like, is that JFK actually voicing him? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> we see JFK, Fidel Castro, Nixon, and McNamara all having a meeting about the Cuban Missile Crisis until they're rudely interrupted by the zombie horde. Sounds like someone breaking in! Just a storm, Dick. 
Sit down. The line JFK says at the end of the cutscene couldn't be more fitting for this map. Do not pray for easy life. Also, I just realized that this cutscene is black and white and then goes to color, which was kind of like a tease to what they ended up doing in Ascension. I didn't even piece that together. That's so cool. So my friends, pray to be because 5 and Ascension take place at the exact same time. Wow, bro. I'm telling you, like, they were genius with it. And a stronger man you will be after genius. playing this map and witnessing its scares. So, let's start from the top here. Wow. Yeah, no, BO1 is genuinely has some of the most impressive lore out of any Call of Duty Zombies game, without a doubt. This is so cool. You spawn into a conference room, and it's surprisingly tame, actually. A little eerie, sure, but nothing horror-filled right now. Much yeah. like the beginning of a haunted house. But let me tell you, it's only going to get worse from here. The spawn room honestly feels and like- And like, the way the spawn room changes once you open a teleporter, it opens up, and it's just like, it, it- Literally, the map transforms. That's what I love about Five. It's a transforming map. It's You've so just gone cool. into the back rooms? I told you not yes, to go into that void barrier. it's literally the back rooms as a map. The only noises you really hear in this place are the clocks ticking, and the beeping and booping of office equipment and telephones. And not yeah. to forget the faint but apparent humming of the office lights. Looking around, you'll notice that there are no barriers. Instead, there's just windows. Behind these windows, you start to see small blurry yellow lights emerging from the dark office rooms behind the glass, which you can't see too clearly through. You can then hear the groans of the flesh eaters getting louder and louder until the glass has been broken and behind it, the infamous zombies are here. How about we take a look at where these zombies are emerging from? They really nailed the first, like, couple minutes of the first zombies maps in BO1. Like, Kino with the zombies coming out of the darkness, and then Noct as well had that, and then with like bro bring that back man that setting of when you load into the map and you feel like everything is crowding around you oh my gosh that was different bro. the out of bounds different. areas in five much like kino made me feel uncomfortable i remember getting lost in thought just staring at the stained and filthy office roof panels rows back upon rooms, rows of man. filing cabinets yep. empty seats bland drab office walls and all the washed out gross looking yellowy office carpets that you can see around this level of the pentagon going out of bounds and walking around and seeing these long stretches of empty bland lifeless offices really is a backrooms experience it feels like you're in a completely different world and everything around you feels detached from reality as you know it and the officers here would fit right at home it literally feels like you could just like turn off into one random corner and just be lost forever or you're in like a dead end maze you know they nailed that aspect even though the map itself is very small they still nailed it with all the liminal spaces you see around the internet much like the back rooms these yes. have so much depth to them and they honestly feel like an endless labyrinth of office blocks with nothing but corpses and dimly lit lights for what looks and feels like miles the haunted house experience has officially begun although not too intense especially considering it's early rounds anyway and accounting for the fact that it's a little bit unsettling because of the abandoned office vibe that has that backrooms feel, it's bright, doesn't feel too claustrophobic, and is shaping up to be another standard zombies map for now. My gosh, they nailed the aesthetic though on five. Like, it's just so good. <laughs> and then the elevators, yeah, like the moment of peace. Yeah, five was great with pacing. Like how the next layer of this haunted house so escapade cool. is like when you've passed the entrance and are now making your way into the deeper part of the complex. You're yes. a little creeped out and uncomfortable, sure, but this is where it stops feeling like you're in a controlled environment and you're now starting to become immersed in the chills. When taking the elevator down the Pentagon, you enter the war room. The war room, where strategy and tactics were once discussed, is now empty. Besides the undead visitors, which, by the way, you might want to keep an eye out for because have you seen how dark it is in this room? Some parts of the war room are so dark that it feels like you can't even see them coming up to you. The only good tell that you have sometimes yeah. is their glowing eyes, and I think that adds to this scare. Which is so cool cool because there's so much light in the room as well but it just shows like how effectively light and darkness was used in the older zombie maps. Train. It taps into the classic fear of the darkness, the yep. unknown. So seeing all these yellow lights illuminating in the darkness is pretty creepy and can help emphasize how many of them there actually are. You've probably also noticed that despite it being a bigger room than the spawn area in the offices, it's somehow more cramped. There's more clutter in the way and you keep running into things that you can't even see and you quickly realize these rooms don't feel like they're designed for a fun time of zombies training and clearly that's something to on Treyarch's behalf. Once again, 5 takes you out of your comfort zone in not only a visual way, but also the way you play the game too, which is a core concept of the zombies mode, and slamming the brakes on it so you can only just barely get by. But even then, the skill gap is big. Have the walls always been this close? A thing about this map that always made my cheeks clench when I was younger and still makes- It's that claustrophobic feeling. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, you start off in this open area on 5 with so much room and you feel like you have so much breathability. You go into the elevator like, oh, this is not that bad. Then the further you see sink into the rabbit hole, the further you realize how much chaos it is. Like that is what five is. And then with the Pentagon thief chasing you through the portals and stuff, five is incredible. People don't get now the vision, is the placement man. of Juggernog. The most yeah. important perk in the entirety of anything ever and all of zombies is tucked away in a corner. Grabbing this yeah. perk is not <laughs> a game literally, just me, but yeah. so many zombies players in the past. Yeah. 
<laughs> in terms of placement for this perk, it's up there with the terrible jug location in Origins. And believe oh, me, that real. is saying something. Yes. You are risking it all going for this perk. Legitimately, yeah. But mid-round, you better leave one zombie, bro. Especially when all it takes is one or two zombies to corner you. This yeah. isn't Cold War or Black Ops 4. You don't have any of these field upgrades or elixirs or any kind. Exactly. It's literally, do you make it or do you not? That's true, man. Kind of get out of jail free cards. So if you're going to get jug, you got to be quick. You the zombies only have to swipe right. you a measly two times. It's yep. painfully ironic. The perk that extends your amount of hits until a down is located in a position where that is likely to happen. Yes. Whoever did this, I hate you, but I also <laughs> love you, but I hate you. Anyway, it's getting cramped in here and I keep running around into random fences and computers, so let's descend down into another layer of this hell, shall oh, we? Oh, yes. And then the bottom floor. This is literally what makes five one of the most iconic zombie maps. This bottom floor, I think, is what most people remember about how different it is from the top floor. A new level of depth and darkness to this house of horrors begins. Yeah. You aren't just immersed in the horror at this point, but it is in fact swallowing you. You forgot you were even in the haunted house, and since you're too far to turn back- And how these portals connect with the campaign, with the numbers, Mason, and all- just... like, It's about time we see the Perfect. main attraction. Upon going down the final layer of hell, we can see a dark, dingy, decrepit set of hallways, completely devoid of colour other than the blue tint on the walls. However, the colour that will stand out the most to not only your eyes, but will hit that fear factor in your brain immediately is the red blood smeared everywhere. everywhere. It is hands down the brightest color in this menacing maze of It's probably the most bright red in any other zombies map. I don't think there's something worse extremely than difficult this. to ignore. Can this much blood even fit in a human? And it's crazy because Classified definitely did not nail the original feeling of what 5 did in the basement. I'll, I'll say that for sure. This place is where you have to go to turn on the power to get yeah. some light source, but it won't be enough. Whilst traversing around these treacherous hallways, you can not only begin to see more blood splattered around the place, but the rooms themselves contain many dark secrets waiting to be discovered. And for those with a keen eye and decent observation skills, can actually venture around these extremely ruined and tight halls and rooms to piece together just what has been happening here one room all the pigs and stuff and like oh it made you feel like horrible just seeing all in the lab is this one here it has human bodies that have been I used know, for experimentation right? and have been cut open to be tinkered with there are also these body lockers full of more humans but if you look at the one in the bottom right you'll notice that there's one missing the shad glass nearby and that empty body locker has ketchup coming from it which clearly tells me that the guy that was stood I think this could have been the Pentagon thief. Around here is one messy eater. Yeah. So that's not actually what went down. Although we shouldn't rule it out entirely. It would seem as though one of these bodies that were stored wasn't as dead as someone thought. You'll also notice that around the lab, there's cages everywhere. Cages that look like they can fit an animal inside of them. In the power room, there's more blood smeared around the place, but it looks as though there's some sort of secret entrance here that some scientists were trying to get to in order to be able to escape these zombies. You can see how desperate they were in their attempt. And I don't know if you noticed. Like just the show don't tell. Like this is what I'm saying. It's just it's so it looks like it failed. The here, last room man. of note here, the creepy room in my opinion is the pig room in this suffocating yeah. space there is a pig that is suspended by some rags it's still alive squealing constantly with flies eating away at it judging by the state of the other rooms in this area this pig was about to experience some horrific testing and honestly may have already experienced it and i've always thought that the pig just has such a sad look in its eye so you know that doesn't help either you can actually choose to put this pig out of its misery but even if you do or don't it's your conscious it will play on you the question of morality man like that's what i love about zombies just simple things like that where it makes you think it makes you question what's in the map five was a master class at that pacing and literally just transforming the zombies map in front of you like it literally told a story in an adventure is phenomenal the player are contributing to this map's extremely sickening atmosphere whether you end the pig or not there's another pig on this surgical table that well let's be honest isn't getting up anytime soon got pork chops tonight Love pork chops. and there's bigger pigs <laughs> next to it with more pigs that i'm it just gonna assume lessons, are sleeping bro. in this same room if you go to the barrier and look out of bounds you'll notice there's part of the floor dug up upon further inspection you'll see these body bags and then it will click these bodies are the failed experiments. They're being hidden under the Pentagon and buried away so they are never found again. You can even see the top of- Freaky, bro. And they put this in a COD game. They would never do this nowadays, bro. The body bags sticking out of the ground from where bro. they've been buried. That's a pretty morbid thing to see outside oh of a barrier. Usually I never even see that, bro. That was a- face oh my god surrounded gosh. you with horror five not only nails that but in this one instance it makes you add to it if you leave the pig it'll slowly die and suffer and if you end the suffering then you've just taken the life of an innocent creature it's probably not that deep at all but from a thematic standpoint <laughs> it makes some sense with like the encounter bro. of this room and everything in it it makes this map just a bit more darker there's no reward for killing the pig or for leaving it it's just about what you feel is the lesser of two evils they should have added the pig and like made it do something in classified again that was a big l as well the cages around the halls that I mentioned earlier may not seem like much at first, but think about everything we've talked about and then those creepy crawly crawlers around the map. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, those guys are back, by the way. Yep. And be back Take the, the test between humans and pigs, zombies. the Nova 6 crawlers themselves, and the pig-like noises that they make. 
I know. Yeah, it sounds like they mix like pig and humans and 115 and this is what came out of it. Just foul. And oh. even the fact that they don't show up until you enter the lab area itself, it all comes together and implies that these tests were in fact to make the Nova 6 crawlers. And the cherry on top here being the that amount of Nova right. 6 gas canisters that are clearly just stored in mass around the map. Transformation yeah. from the pig to these. Whether it was deliberate or not, maybe they're a failed experiment, it's terrifying to think about and without a doubt one of the scariest things on this map. Now that the power is on, we can see the teleporters open up to move us around the map <laughs> and traverse around the layers of this hellscape bed. Yeah, you turn on the power you're like, oh, we're all safe now. Nope. But the rounds are ticking the over fast, and begins. the place has gotten a lot darker all of a sudden. Yes. Your eyes are starting to dart around the narrow rooms, and you can hear a really off-putting noise. It sounds digital and glitchy, and you cannot for the life of you tell what they the noise exactly the is. Pentagon Why are there no zombies spawning? There are no hellhounds spawning either, so what is it? The jump scare. There he is, the Pentagon thief. <laughs> he comes and snatches your weapon and runs away. You Honestly, one of the coolest bosses still to this day in Zombies. The idea and the premise behind him is so cool, and it's an actual shame he was not added into Classified. You can get it back if you eliminate him, so you'd best hope that you have enough points for another weapon off the wall. The Pentagon thief is freaky because of the atmosphere he creates. It's like yeah. being in a horror film. A good one, mind you. He looks quite unsettling too. He has these goggles that feel like they stare right into your soul, and his lab coat is just full of markings and scribbles. He is infamous for sneaking it's up. It's so cool though. You, you know he's coming, you just don't know when, and I feel such suspense when this round starts. Hoping he doesn't sneak up on me and taking away one of my only means of defense in this already extremely Probably the best map. Black Ops Zombies boss, for sure. Like with Five is one know. hell of a map. It's Literally. amazing. After looking into why this map used to freak me out and still retains its fear factor, I would say it mainly boils down to its difficulty and claustrophobia. You constantly feel like the map is getting tighter and tighter as you descend down through the Pentagon, and like I said earlier, it feels like- And that with four players and just having a good time is I genuinely, I think, what makes Five so much fun to me. Structured similar to that of a haunted house with it's what a thrill it delivers. Map. A horrific, inhumane secret waiting at the bottom from what seems like such a normal office on the surface, albeit with a strange ghostly atmosphere to it. The Pentagon Thief is a beautiful finishing touch to this map, making the difficulty much harder and the stakes much higher. He is determined to cripple you by taking away your only means of defense. I agree. I think this map would suffer heavily without this. Like, there's just a, the character of this map is so different compared to anything we've seen. That being your That's weapons and with the claustrophobic so cool. spaces and the small amount of help you have, it makes yes. you feel like you are sinking into a ever closing pit. Of they hell. nailed the lore on this map. Absolutely. I love five. Kino, eh, five W. And then Ascension. Ascension is a goal. really weird one. And what yes. I mean by that is that it doesn't jump out at you and make any scares it has remotely clear, but that does not mean there isn't a lot to appreciate with this yes, one. Ascension 100%. blends its frights with the map, and that's why describing what is initially scary about our favorite Soviet base, unless you have another favorite Soviet base, that is, when compared to the rest <laughs> of the world maps, it is hard oh. to think of specifically one or two things. So I'm going to try my best with this one. I've got to be honest, I feel kind of obligated to talk about the loading screen music of Ascension because it just sounds so good. What makes Bro. it jump out to me and what makes it relevant to- And then how they tied it in with Moon and how they made it like such an incredible like tune and jingle throughout the storyline I, bro i mean black ops the story the first game was iconic if you didn't live through it back in 2010 or you weren't around during then I feel so bad for you. This genuinely. video in particular it is that so it conveys cool this evil sci-fi type of theme, like something a character would hear as they're about to enter some sort of abandoned research facility that did some really twisted things, and that there's some sort of evil rabbit hole that you're about to venture down into. It just works really well, especially with the loading screen itself, which I've got to be honest, I could sit and analyze these things all day. Yeah, and the loading screens back in the day were so interesting. People would talk about them because there was just so much to it that just wasn't ever explained. Like, why do we have a picture of a cell? Who is this? Who is this? We now know that this is obviously Gersh experimenting with the technology, but it's just like, back in the day, we didn't understand this. I mean, I was a kid. I had no hey, But just to keep it on. brief, something that does stand out are the rockets that have shadows, and those shadows spell out 115. Now, yeah, if that alongside bro. with the music doesn't make that feel ominous, then I don't know what does. It's a very hidden little detail that by no means really needed to be there, yet it was added anyway, and I think it actually- Whereas loading screens back in like BO4 just- they didn't really have that same level of depth. They were just like, oh, look at the new characters. It was just like, uh, you it know. It was hand in hand with the illustrations and the music to show how 115 as a whole is a looming threat that is hiding in this facility. When you spawn in the map, you'll notice that it's dark. The color then begins to fade. It's just black and white. How strange. You're landing into the map through a flying platform, literally being lowered into this desolate hell, a hell you can't even properly observe due to the black and white filter. And straight off the bat, the use of this filter seems to be present for emphasizing the use of the power switch within the map. Once it's flipped, you have just brought not 
not only power, but light and color to this wasteland of a place. And again, just tying into that five story is just so cool. Place. However, Ascension isn't How the most vibrant that. map ever, and amazing. so whilst you would expect to see this incredibly bright map, you get lots of dull colors, blood that's wet and dry, and the place is still just as empty as you found it. Except for the freak sacks, of course. This place has been overrun and abandoned, remember? The turning on of the power is a huge victory for the player, sure. And like, but... okay, a lot of people like to use this map as the excuse towards Treyarch has always remastered old content like multiplayer maps or campaign maps, because this map is from the campaign, but... The thing is, is that most people don't even know that. I didn't even know that until very recently because like they just modeled this map into being something so incredible as a zombies map. And so I think it's fine if they take old assets, but like reuse them creatively like how they used to back in this game where they made its own story throughout it. Like I don't want to play a map and feel like I'm playing a multiplayer or a campaign map. And I never got that feeling once on Ascension. But they the huge facility it. far out from civilization, yes. what difference did you really make? This yes. one has a haunting start to it, but the disorienting grayscale not giving you enough detail as to what's going on around you, mixed with the freakishly empty room, devoid of any people, but all of their equipment is still there, really does just make something feel off about the map. I don't know if this was just me, but when I played Ascension for the first few times, and even to this very day, I feel like I'm being watched every time in this spawn room. I don't know what I it is about know. the map. I can't and then that's where, like... It was such a great inclusion for Chronicles to add Dr. Monty up in the one of the windows because it literally just tied in with the story so well. Really described this one. I feel like I'm being watched or monitored in some literally, way. At the beginning, yes. we hear the voice of a man. It's a man. giving you that like Portal 2 feeling you know in distress I feel calling that for help so saying well. he is trapped and to hurry because she is coming the she huh? is none other than the tragic and nightmare inducing Samantha Maxis she has been solidified as a loose cannon at this point from the events of World at War back in the Reese and the fact that she sends undead hounds to eat you like all the time this gives you yeah. and the boys a sense of urgency from the very start of the match you know what I choose this and then Gersh's message, yeah. I will help you, but only if you get me some vodka. Although Ascension <laughs> Easter Egg is short, it does a good job drilling in that feeling of urgency, making you a little creeped out by hearing how hopeless and scared Dr. Gersh actually is. The fact that Gersh says this to you pretty much as soon as you enter the map shows that he's clearly in desperate need of help, which really goes a long way to show just how powerful and feared Samantha has become amongst mere mortals like Dr. Gersh and the characters we play as. Now, back in the day when zombies came out in World at War, they would simply walk, run, and sprint toward your direction in a straight line, not being able to comprehend any sense of danger coming towards them as you finish stuff in another belt of bullets into your M1919 Browning, and then keep firing away at the undead as they keep rushing towards you in that straight line. Ascension really did change that. Added a bunch of different movement to the zombies. It also just added movement to a whole new storyline. Like, it was the first Easter egg, and it was a great stepping stone and a good start towards, like, the fantastical side of where the DLC led the players like diving in head first and getting really stuck in there to help paint the walls red now that was the case for all zombies in world at war and early block ops one maps that being kino and five right up until the release of ascension and it only happens in ascension which is very odd you'll be playing ascension like you normally would and then you'll go to shoot a zombie and all of a sudden bro it's a <laughs> bro it's a <laughs> did that zombie just dodge my shot Yes, yes it did. <laughs> Not only did this really throw me off guard when I first saw this, but this is a bit creepier when you think about it how some of these zombies know. Because this is the thing, they don't change up the movement per map like they did back in the day like this. This was so unique. Or to evade your defenses and seemingly have some sort of spatial awareness. Seems as though those glowing eyes aren't just for display. The zombies in this map aren't just mindlessly, literally, trying to kill you. They are actively strategizing and reacting to your actions, giving them a new layer of danger that you need yeah, to be vigilant Yeah, and they were military really, though, zombies, This has never returned why. in any other zombies maps, I know. which leads me to believe Whatever so happened cool. to these zombies, what Samantha may have done to them, or if they've freshly been turned, they seem a cut above the rest. A fun little idea though is maybe- For real, Russian zombies went different apparently. They're like the virals in Dying Light, where they're survivors that have just been turned. So they Legit. still retain some of that human movement and likeness, in the sense that they're more agile and more aware of what's happening around them. And I think for Ascension, that could make sense. Ascension uses its scale well to show not only how- It is unreal, where I honestly think Zelensky was trying to transform zombies into that back in the day, before Blundell changed it in BO2 but alone oh, you are in such so a cool. once busy place it also shows how stranded you are and that there is no good way of escape and the ways it actually presents this scale to you is what i appreciate so much about it whenever you think of ascension you picture the rocket right it's the heart of the map and it towers over you quite ominously too like all the scrap metal and machines are going to restrain you and topple onto you with the amount of machinery and junk around the map honestly it gives me some fallout vibes sometimes it's really honestly ascension is really just a scrapyard 
That's really what it is. It's a scrapyard with a rocket, uh, rocket test site. That's really all it is, and it's still phenomenal. I always found it striking when you took a trip on a Lunar Lander. Something that is needed in order to progress through the map and I unlock know, Pack a Punch brings you into the air in this facility. And you would think that there must be a lot going on outside, but then you fly up and it's nothingness for miles yeah. and miles, completely shrouded by darkness and fog. And just, if, I think that's what freaks you out more on this It map, looks genuinely post-apocalyptic, like yeah. a Fallout game. Take Legit. that combined with all the metal yeah. junk around the place. You think that Good Springs are some shit is out there. Upon realizing all of this when you're up in the sky, you're then lowered down back into the depths of this desolate hell. With this new perspective of the map in it your like mind, sucks both you the inside the and nightmare. the outside of this map are eerily quiet. Further yes. adding to that wastelandish feel that Ascension seems to capture so well. The ambience is used in full effect, with nothing but wind blowing, minor electric sparks flying, and metal bending to immerse you in this nuclear fallout vibe. And just like, bro, they nailed that aspect of just like this big, like, sight like a construction site almost, that you shouldn't even be there, you know? Like, they nailed these ambiences with each and every single Zombies map. Like, the new Zombies maps you play, you don't feel like you're really there. But in these ones, you really do. Like, down to the core and the heart of it, they they just killed it, man. It's so impressive how the ambient settings in BO1 did just such an incredible job. And like the little beeps and like how like it just looks like it could go on forever like it looks like if you were to walk out there it would be 200 miles of desert and you're not going to make it either way you know they nailed that incredible and i i love black like honestly black ops zombies the first game is still one of my favorite zombies games ever and this for these reasons ambience the gameplay the way the game made you feel throughout the entirety while you played it. I mean, I, I don't play games that make Combine the like ambience that, with the know? desolate, rundown visuals, and this will look no different to a barren wasteland. For the cosmic real. monkeys that you see that come and take your perks, which is so goddamn annoying, by the way, is a stark <laughs> reminder that <laughs> much like five animals ups. sadly were experimented on in the pursuit of twisted experiments and selfish people trying to reach their own selfish goals no matter what cost. Although the zombie monkeys don't feel very threatening, <laughs> no, they can they beat you up. Look in their eye. It feels like there was never a living thing behind those red eyes. They come crashing down from space and they choose violence. These zombie monkeys aren't anything you need to be quivering in your boots because of. I feel more sorry for them than anything else. It's not exactly. I mean, they're very powerful. They take two thunder gun shots. Like, I, what else does that? Okay, the only thing that takes three is a margua. It's clear what happened to the monkeys, unlike the pigs in five. But all it. we know is it involves animal testing, one on five, and being launched to space. Regardless of that, whatever they were launched up into space as aren't the same things that crash down from space and want to beat up glowing machines. And the most extreme case of this animal testing on monkeys was none other than the guy himself, Cosmic Silverback. You know, the big funny zombie gorilla. Yet that thing. I would love for him to come into an actual zombies map one of these days. It's honestly embarrassing. He wasn't either in Ascension or Moon, low-key. Being confirmed to have escaped from Ascension, so if there's yeah. things like Cosmic Silverback that exist, then uh, who knows what else they were doing Just here. the lore just in case from Ascension, Ascension didn't have enough so weird cool. stuff in it. I've got to talk about the teddy bears. Yes, Samantha's signature toys have made a return in Ascension, and in usual yeah, fashion, I'm the sure he never drilled. By finding and interacting map. with all three of these, it'll play another classic Treyarch bop. I know, and then the music, oh man. Yeah, what a different time. What's so weird about these teddy bears, you ask, and why am I mentioning them? Well, it's the fact that this time they're not just sat on their own covered in blood. They are wielding a sickle, a signature weapon of this map, and it's only a small detail. Them holding a sickle probably isn't that big a deal. But I can't lie, they give off this threatening presence when you see them like that. They're stood around in places as if they're a bit more active than just laying around somewhere, like they chose to stand up. But this effect should sink in a bit harder now because we know how dangerous Samantha is at this point, and the wrath that she's already bestowed upon poor Dr. Gersh. It's like the teddy bears are keeping a close eye on you. Something which the Reese did- Legit. Yeah, that's such a great way of putting it. And they're literally just watching you throughout the entire time. You've been watched since Noctur and Tone, you know? <laughs> really well with that shadow of a teddy bear. It's like Samantha's in the background, always keeping tabs on you. Yeah, Ascension cool. is a dead, lonely place, both inside the map and out. Although Gersh is somewhat present, he's under attack, and when everyone around you is either about to be killed by a little ghost girl or wants to rip you to shreds... People always don't understand the map correctly. I feel like a lot of people did not play this map on launch, and it can definitely show. And, like, I love that Exceptional Gamer truly understands what made Ascension great, because if this map wasn't great, 
we wouldn't even have the rest of the incredible zombie maps after. You're just as lonely and in danger as so Gersh. Much You're in a place war. where there was supposed to be progress in rocket science, and if a whole facility of scientists and Russian soldiers were wiped out by the horde, then you're next on the chopping block for sure. Just like many maps in these early days of zombies, you're stranded once again. Except this is a huge place, now completely empty and desolate. It gives you a sense of control by being able to restore light and colour to the facility, but it won't really fix much. The only help you have is in peril, which you have to rescue, and as you play through the map you realise how no one could ever find you, and just how tiny you are, in what feels like exactly. a vast fallout. It's as if the facility's oversized machines are caving you in, trapping you there. Ascension does such a great job of tricking you into feeling like you're in some sort of barren, destroyed wasteland. Who knows what else is out there? Again, set up ambience perfectly. And then call the dead? You want to talk about ambience with call the dead? Perfect, bro. Plus an incredible map layout. I mean, Call of the Dead is gold. Ah, the Siberian tundra. I know. What a cold place. Cold enough, in fact, that you could freeze to death. I found Call of the Dead to be quite a chilling map. I love this map. That is guy, man. For me, I think Call of the Dead stands out for the very unique way that it delivers its own unsettling theme. It's yes. cold. Although loneliness is present cold in most maps from map. to Black Swan, and certainly is still here in Call of the Dead, it's the coldness that's always stood out to me here, and really always has. When you think about how the map is designed, you'll realise that the harsh weather conditions are designed to work directly against the player, or at least affect the way they traverse around the map. A good example of this is the infamous icy waters that connect to other parts of the map, parts that you have to traverse. The fog? I don't mind the fog on Call of the Dead. Everybody's like, bro, the fog, the fog. Bro, it's part of the map. Like, it makes you feel like you're boxed in half the time. I really like that. Like, through to either get around cool. the map or be able to obtain items like perks and pack a punch. And if you're sluggish enough to stay in the water too long, you'll begin to freeze, a slow and painful death to have to go through. The water slows you down exponentially, and as the cold sets in, you're eventually completely debilitated, all the while the flesh feasters are coming for you. The thought of being this cold is overwhelming, in all honesty. I couldn't possibly imagine how cold it would actually be. Average day in Canada. I mean, this has been my life for too long. <laughs> from time to time, this very thought would cross my mind when traversing the frosty waters in Call of the Dead. Having to work around or sometimes charge headfirst into the cold creates an interesting atmosphere and dynamic to the map that brings some hesitation when the zombies can trudge through the elements just fast enough to be able to swipe you and put you down below the waters. Yeah. There's also the fog, a result of hardware limitations from Call of the Dead being so grand in scale, making it too demanding for the Xbox 360 and PS3 at the time, much like Transit, now acts as a harsh disadvantage in conjunction to the coldness. This one really is a sim- Again, if you were really upset about about it you can just turn it off on black ops 3 version but i mean they still nailed it well as the less you can see the worse off you are games that are solely made around scaring players use vision to its advantage and although the fog is accidental seeing the zombies emerge from it or worse seeing george freaking romero's glowing spotlight hammer sparking through the mist i have a lot to say about and it like popping up like as like a like a PTSD, you're like, oh, big man George is on his way. <laughs> you're like, George oh. Romero on this map. Another way that the environment of the map works against you to create a more hectic and hopeless feeling is the star of the show himself, George Romero. Hot. Are you blind, man? And how this was the first celebrity cast, and I think it literally it's more set it set up so much of the story while also being its own story, which is so cool. Mr. Romero as more of a hazard in this map, like the weather conditions I've been talking yeah. about earlier, changing the way you play, making you feel very suffocated in a map where you can go pretty much anywhere in order to survive. This is because George doesn't feel or function like a normal zombie. He's a force to be reckoned with, a force of nature. Not too different literally. from the unforgiving cold, George Romero wants to hunt you. Slowly Bosses don't feel like how they used to. Like, this was the first ever boss in zombie and he truly was a force of nature like that's how it feels it's not just like oh mangler shoot his armor he's good no no this is like good luck you Wait, know? but surely it makes you feel like you can't settle into a comfortable routine the exactly. true wild card of call of the dead sure he and they did this because people were pro primarily camping back in the day they didn't know how to hoard and so most people now with the high round strap just take out george for the free uh wonder waff but he killed but he will always come intense, back yeah. if you go too close to him he'll strike you with his hammer let out yep. a loud roar and begin charging after you he can be calmed down when he strikes you with his hammer and chases you but he can always be angered again his ominous mumbling laughs and taunts always used to creep me out especially when you didn't know exactly where he was at any given time in a match, which was in part due to that thick fog working against you once again, but you could hear him calling for you. I know. Where are you? The idea of something that can't be I'm killed and he's here. always trying to get you and <laughs> like, stop no. trying and what feels like towers above you. This guy's yeah. tall. It's quite scary. That's why and then when you take him out, he only leaves for two rounds. George like, is so effective. He isn't just a zombie. He is part of the map's dangerous environment, only able to be calmed by that very environment. He yeah. is one with it. Much like the unrelenting cold, Romero has to be worked around and controlled for the whole time you're playing this map. From the very start of your game to the very bitter end. Something which can only be done for so long and when it gets too much, 
you will suffer. I guess what I'm saying is George Romero is simply built different. Oh yeah, the zombies. The zombies in this map take a withered and frosted design, with their bodies taken over by the piercing cold, and some parts are completely gone. Like the zombies with no jaw that have presumably snapped. Honestly, this map really reminds me of the Reznov mission in Black Ops 1, and they just... They just did such a good job tying it all in together. Because that mission also involves Nova 6, which is also a big deal in this map. It's off due to the so, icy climate and decay. They are hands down some of the scariest designs for zombies we've had in my opinion. And they always yeah. gave me the heebie-jeebies. Looking yeah. at the zombies is what feels like a solid reminder of the cold, being able to take hold of even those monstrosities. As far as creepy details go in Call of the Dead, it's not exactly its strong point, but I will point out this. It's something that is unique to this map, so I really appreciate it for that. When you go near to where Mule Kick is, if you look in this container, you will see these. If you're wondering what they are, good question. They appear to be these test subjects holding containers where people would be strapped into it. And upon seeing it at first, you might not realize what they- Like, I never realized what this was probably up until recently. But yeah, if you know the lore, like, this is mega terrifying. Not until you stop for a minute and actually take a closer look at them. My best guess as to what was going on with these is that maybe live subjects, prisoners of war, or even zombies may yeah. be transported over to Siberia via these test subject containers. There are another example of details that are placed in the game that make you go, what the fuck? But I've actually never noticed these. I, I always ran past them and just thought that they were some sort of electronics. And so realizing what they actually were, I end up getting a lump in my throat. It's even more experimentation and inhumane practices going on, as these people were probably transported overseas to be further experimented with and contained. Makes you think of like some Squid Games type of stuff, seeing that stuff, you know? <laughs> like, with all the Zeds considered, imagine. the weather, the desolate location, and the big scary guy with a spotlight hammer, Call of the Dead's cast of characters, played by real actors by the way, including George Romero, the director of the film that shares the same name of the map. And the cutscenes, how it ties into real life lore as well, and George is literally explaining that to you. Just so iconic. I don't think people get how amazing every single Black Ops 1 Zombies map was. And sure, people might not might uh, not really, they might not really enjoy Shang. You know, that might be the worst one, but I'm telling you. Michael Rooker, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert all England, and Danny Trejo, they're let's be honest, probably aren't as fit to survive such unforgiving conditions as the four soldiers in World at War and Ultimus in Black Ops 1 are. Our four characters in this map were just here to act in a film, and Romero was just there to direct it, and they got completely screwed over by the yep. zombies. If Dempsey, exactly. Richtofen, Nikolai, and Takio managed to put an end to the zombies and fix the universe after dying and having to start over god knows how many times, what really makes you think that a couple of actors would survive not only the brutal undead, but the unrelenting climate of Siberia in their way? Yep. Yep, yep. I mean, that's what it, it tied it into real life. Like every time it ties it into real life, I always say that makes it a better story because it just it's like, oh, maybe this could have happened if zombies did exist. You know, that type of like, oh, no way. You Call know? of the Dead uses all of its cards when it comes I to map Call design and setting. I always Incredible felt as though map. it was an overarching theme of the coldness. Other maps show you how bad Group 935 are and the zombies are, but this map combines the zombies with the looming threat of Mother Nature herself to show you how brutal they are as a duo. You're constantly yep. having to push back against this nature. Call of the Dead ends up making zombies a management game just as much as it is a And again, they nail the lighting. Like how the caves are darker, yet they have these like little dynamite sticks showing you the light and how like... How light and darkness played off in Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3 specifically were so incredible. Listen, shoot a game. You're having to learn to try and control the nature, but it can't be tamed. Not forever anyway. Even with the zombies out of the picture, if you are stranded out in the Siberian tundra, it's the bit of coldness that controls you. Much like our characters, fighting for their lives in this icy desert with no good way out, and as a result, they will most likely suffer a terrible, slow death, consumed by the cold. Oh, yeah, and then the, just like the loud wind. Call of the Dead is phenomenal. Truly one of my favorite maps ever. Deserves it. It's just so incredible. And then Shang. Shang's still great too, though. Imagine being teleported Not to as ancient good, but ruins it's amazing. deep in the Himalayas that is actually Mars, with zombies all around as you uncover a secret upon yeah. these mountains about British explorers stuck in time loops and a mystical rock which you need. All whilst zombie monkeys Like, that's mad. They went from a lighthouse map to Mars, dog. I still can't believe that. And take things that aid you in your survival as you shoot the normal zombies with a gun that shrinks them into tiny little zombies. First off, well done for managing to cram all of that into your brain. And secondly, <laughs> welcome to Cod Zombies. It only gets weirder from here. Shangri-La gives yeah. exactly the experience I mentioned earlier. Ancient ruins and lots of secrets. It's so true because Black Ops 1 wasn't even that weird compared to what we got in BO3 and BO4. Cover. Before we get to what know. I feel is the best and scariest part of such an intriguing map, let's talk about the rest of it. This map makes you feel as though you are diving headfirst into a dark mystery that you're never going to quite get the hang of and wrap your head around. One that'll keep your mind just as active as your character is in game. The way this mystery is even introduced is the loading screen. It's one of those images that makes me feel just as uneasy as it- One of the most unique and telling like mystery loading screens ever. Plus also this is still the best looking tropical zombies map ever. I would love to have another one. I guess the closest you could say we've had is Firebase Z, but it just doesn't come close to how gorgeous this map was, man.
This it map does make me feel else. intrigued. It emits the fear of the unknown sense on you. Seriously, look at it. What is actually I happening know, here? Right? Ancient ruins? A freak storm? Oddly cut patterns in the grass? It's confusing, and still to this day has its intrigue and a slight dread for sure. But the first few times seeing this image not knowing the story of Shangri-La is definitely jarring. Although once the secrets of the map are spilled, the loading screen will hit a little different. Shangri-La takes place in the Himalayas, a setting radically different from the other four maps that we've had so far. This isn't an open area by any means. In fact, it's one of the most narrow zombies maps today, and it gives the impression that you're really shrouded in this chaotic jungle. It uses the foliage to its fullest effect here. Instead of having thick cold walls surrounding you, as is the standard procedure for zombies, most of the time you're blocked off via the dense- Like, it's gotta be said that this is a 2010 game, yet it is still the most beautiful zombies map, and zombies has been going strong now for 15 years? Like, even if you hate Shangri-La as a gameplay standpoint, you can't hate it for how beautiful this map looks, man. My god. Jungle trees, bushes, wow. and branches. Ruins Gorgeous. can be found which appear to be ancient, with like, strange patterns and architecture that gives off an alienating feeling whilst progressing through this place. And that's not even mentioning the zombies themselves. The Shangri-La zombies have some of the most interesting and unique zombie models that I've seen in Black Ops 1. They look oh, yeah. really malnourished and covered in filth. All they were literally advertising women zombies back in the day as like a selling feature of this map, which is actually Loki just wild. Whilst the cane. There's also weird tattoos on the zombies, and I have no idea what these are. It makes me feel like there's something bigger going on. They're victims of this jungle of chaos. Like yeah. many of the other maps on here, especially when I was a kid playing this one, again, I felt really lost and isolated, and the foliage once again helps with this, which makes the map feel like some sort of maze, with all of the foliage I mentioned and the ruins. I also feel like I have to mention the underground section that is below the map. Shangri-La doesn't have these extremely so hidden background really details. Created. Instead, it just lays it all out on the table for you to look at. The mines yeah. are filled with 115 meteors everywhere. It really reminds me of Shinonuma, where the one five meteor itself, the very cause of the zombies, is somewhere in the corner of your eye, reminding you of the terror that it's inflicted. And in a certain room, along with these 115 rocks, there's this slew of dead bodies and even these hogs, which have this demonic look to them which I can't unsee. Also, the zombie containers from Kino de Toten are back in Shangri-La. Clearly whatever 935 were up to- What's also unbelievable is that I li literally remember talking to Treyarch about Shangri-La, and they literally told me that the, you know, the waterfall section where you can click the don't click button to cause the waterfall. That whole area was supposed to be underwater. And so when you open up the door from the top area where the bridge is, when you open up that door, it should have just been water and you were supposed to swim through it towards the, to the power, which I mean, bro, the original idea for Shang would have been insane. Also with like four different variations of the baby gun, but seeing it regardless is extends far beyond just their facilities in Germany and instead it seems like they're trying to hide a lot of things in Shangri-La. Although it yeah. seems like there was a 115 deposit here and a lot of people were mining away at it to be able to get more of the stuff. I don't really think I need to describe how sinister all of this is here together but the way it's all laid out and stuff is such a mess. It fits the crazy chaotic nature of the jungle itself and with the amount of 115 it radiates that supernatural aura that the map has going for it. And I don't know just the tunnels in general how dark they are at the end it feels like there's something down there about to jump out at me. Every single window barrier in this map map tells a story that's what makes Shangri-La so incredible like and then also the whole Brock and Gary story they also it, it just makes me want to map. nope the hell out of there even when I was recording the phenomenal. shots of the tunnel and stuff I got this really like panicked feeling like this pit in my stomach it was a really weird I experience know, right? as I was making that. my way through Shangri-La I had the creeping suspicion that I was not meant to be here a theme which yeah. I'm sure you've noticed all the way back from World at War to now like I found myself becoming entangled in a sadistic secret the more I started to realize what was going on here and believe me you really have to work to find out what this all means and much like Darius from World at War Shang's real kicker takes it from being a fairly ominous map to a zombies map fueled by otherworldly doom. So what is this mystery? Well, whilst finding radios around this map and doing the main easter egg quest, you learn of two British explorers named Brock and Gary. They fly over Shangri-La with an expedition crew and after learning about where Shangri-La is from some Jump aliens down, explained that it was on top of the mountain, Brock and Gary wasted no time to venture into the mossy jungle. Brock later reveals that his intent for coming here was to look for a gateway to Agatha in order to prove once and for all of its existence. And for those that don't know, Agatha is said to be this legendary kingdom, a utopia centered in the Earth's core. And it follows on from the- Which I honestly wish we would have gotten an Agatha map part of me also kind of thinks that the great war map could have been an agartha map but i don't know hollow earth theory which i recommend doing some research into it is wild the duo find shangri-la realizing that this place was not abandoned <laughs> The heat and humidity is just excruciating. According to the locals, the, the quotes are so range sick, too. Gary, do you hear that? A waterfall. We must be close. Hand me the binoculars. There is a structure up ahead. If this is truly a gateway to Agatha, my work will finally be validated. Uh, Brock, I don't think this place is abandoned. Don't be silly. This place has to be thousands of years old. The duo are inspecting some shrines until, all of a sudden, a strange freak eclipse happens as hordes of the undead begin to appear with the explorers in their sight and start to chase them as Brock and Gary get the hell out of there. I have found some unfinished carvings around the structures I can't make out. They do not look like... 
Wait, what is this? This map literally to me was just Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. And I absolutely love that movie. And this map nailed it. Like the Easter egg is literally its own little quest. Like it feels so adventurous. And like you're telling your own movie-like story, you know. They nailed it. What are those things? Zombies. We have to find another way. Zombies. Zombies. What are you talking about? The writing's must have been right. And it's got that like Scooby-Doo type of like dialogue, bro. I got nothing. We will have to conserve our supplies. Take your shoes off and hand me your socks. They manage to get stuck in a temple on their escape as Brock does a recording exclaiming that Gary has died. And along with the battery of his radio that is going to die too, Gary. Brock will follow. I rip my boy Brock. I've been trapped in the temple structure for days. Gary is dead, and I don't see a way out of here. I can still hear the zombies outside. I fear this is my last recording, as the battery is about to die, and I will soon follow. See, dude, this is so ominous, you know? Like, dang. In the next radio, it would seem that they're actually alive, somehow. They eventually stumble upon an altar with Richtofen wrote on it, as well as the Focusing yeah. Stone, a device which, if you're a zombie story veteran, you'll know what this is. And if you don't, it's basically a 1 5 meteor that needed to be shrunk down, and it's required for Richtofen's final plan in the Moon Easter Egg. Upon discovering the Focusing Stone, the two explorers interact with it. Although, after Brock touches the Focusing Stone, the strangest thing happens. I am now entering the antechamber. I see some sort of altar, and there is a rock suspended above it. This is just wonderful. An inscription. Rick Ta Fen. Rick Fen. Gary, take an etching. The rock above the altar seems to be suspended in thin air. I'm going to remove it now. We've been in this jungle for days and haven't seen any. And then it literally cycles him back. It's so cool how like different items throughout the zombies lore literally cause cycles for different characters. Like. 115, man. Sign of this hidden temple. I cannot give up. It has to be here. I can't shake this feeling like we're going in circles. We should get to higher ground and take a look. Like he's back with he Gary. Like Gary's alive, you know. To the locals, the temple should be in this mountain range. And then they're back looking for the temple. Do you hear that? It's so cool. Hand me the binoculars. There is a structure up ahead. If this is truly a gateway to Agatha, my work will finally be validated. They, like, ugh, bro, I love the story in these games. It's just so cool how they mesh them all together while still making it fun and unique to listen out to. Like, so it would appear that through touching the focusing stone, Brock so and Gary have amazing. been strung into a time loop in which yep. every single time they die, they are then thrown back to when they first discovered the hellscape of Shangri-La, advancing through the jungle. During the easter egg of the map, you're trying to communicate with Brock and Gary, trying to help them in whatever way you can, but sadly, there is no way out for them. Even when the easter egg is complete, they aren't saved. And in other timelines, they can't ever catch a break or get any kind of happy ending. They will always be stuck there forever. And that's haunting. Shangri-La is terrifying to me once you learn about Brock and Gary. It's a terrifying paradise right like again they nailed the ambience by telling it through the story this time which was really good because it was simple yet effective not right? terrifying in a wow look how creepy that decaying zombie is kind of way but exactly. more psychological than that imagine yes, being stuck a in a time loop horror. with absolutely no way out where you yeah. constantly die over and over trying to cling to every bit of sanity that you have nothing bo one was kind of like taking a lot of stories that you see from like black mirror or even the twilight zone and putting them into like actual maps which honestly they should do that more that's what gives it so much more of that interest ever moves forward it's a personal hell where no one can hear you scream but you will over and over and over and over again. Yeah. I really love the time loop stuff. It brings a certain level of nihilism that's enough to become chilling. It sheds light on how time this loops cool. can completely change a person's mind, change yeah. the way they are. Sometimes for the better, but most of the time for worse. It taps into a really interesting part of humans, and this is probably why I loved the game's Death Loop and Hades, and why I love the anime ReZero, which really showcases the lasting effects of constantly dying over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is I, Frederica. Look at those choppers! I promise you, it, it is good. It's <laughs> that, that anime season two, whoa, don't, don't hard to watch how much Subaru Natsuki suffers as the show goes on. But before this video becomes a ReZero analysis, let's get back to Brock and Gary. Much like the other media that I mentioned, Brock and Gary's story fits right in there, showing what going insane could be like. Except the thing is, they don't even really know they're in a loop. Not even remembering takes this yeah. to another completely different level. It would be like forgetting what you can't even remember in the first place, but I'm sure your brain would carry over the trauma of it and so you would just
just go insane without even knowing why. It filled yeah. me with dread, and loops are a huge theme in zombies. But Shangri-La best displays how the time loop idea can be its own unbreakable infinite void. Aesthetics and other parts of the map aside, this Such is Shangri-La's ace card. Map, a scary man. look into an unavoidable, unbreakable cycle of nothing but pain, confusion, and inescapable insanity. Like, most people never gave this map a try because it was just so difficult, and unfortunately, it's the one zombies map on public matches where you'll never be able to access the pack punch machine because you have to get four people to actually cooperate. And so because of that, I feel like people just never got to understand or play one of the most intriguing stories in Call of Duty Zombies for sure, man. This Shang is all wrapped up phenomenal. in a mystery that is seemingly otherworldly and would be extremely difficult to comprehend for anyone. So oh, being yeah. stuck in a situation like this, not only suffering where no one can hear or see you, but there would be a lingering state of confusion that would never, ever go away. I know. Like, Shangri-La is many things. A deep amazing. ancient shrine filled yeah. with mystery. A ruined yet beautiful place. But most of all... I, I would honestly love for another map to come out like Shangri-La, which is kind of what I thought Firebase Z was going to be in Vietnam, because Vietnam is so gorgeous, but yet it just did not deliver in my opinion. Shangri-La is a tragedy. It presents yeah. a horrific story, one that you can't look away from. Brock and Gary's story is the showstopper entrenched in this map. It took the radio hunt in that worked so well with Doris and how that told its story and implemented it with just as much finesse as Treyarch did back in World at War. It really is the darkest secret that lies in this jungle and there is nothing you can do to save or reverse these explorers pain. Probably one of the most beautiful starting rooms ever. I mean just these two dragons are just so iconic. And then finishing it off with Moon. I mean, seriously, this is a phenomenal video, exceptional game. The Moon. Out of all the places you would expect a zombies map to take place, yeah. especially back in 2011, I think that the freaking Moon would have been the last place people would have thought of. If there is any And it was supposed to be. This map was supposed to be Paris. And to be honest, I don't think Paris would have been as iconic. I don't think they would have wouldn't have been able to given uh Paris enough justice. Whereas the Moon there's not really that much of a concrete idea other than it's not on Earth, so... <laughs> Anything you know? that genuinely scares me shitless, it's space. Oh, yeah. the, the ocean is really up there too. Whenever I get into deep thought about space, I get a horrible feeling of existential dread. Like I'm having some sort of crisis when I actually start to realize how isolated you are from anything that is even remotely familiar. You aren't just far away, you are far away. And once a feeling like that... You're farther than the farthest away. Sets in, your survival space. instincts will go wild. In this video and the Horrors of World at War video, I'm sure you may have noticed that although each map has its own unique themes and presents its own kind of horror, as different as they've all been, the one theme I think they've all shared is the sense of isolation. Moon takes that feeling and ups it to another world. When your game's loaded and you've spawned in on Moon, you'll notice you're not on the moon at all. <laughs> I know, it's a- it's, you're like, huh? Instead, you've just spawned inside just of Area 51. And there's Pack-a-Punch? Anyway, you notice that there's no sign of a round count, yet there's zombies emerging from the ground and coming in from all different sides of the it's area. It's wild, because this was one of the first maps that loads you right next to Pack-a-Punch after- like, since Darice, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Then a beep can be heard, and they begin sprinting at you. They aren't going down after one knife either, and they start spawning in mass, along with Hellhounds. Another beep is heard, and even more begin to swarm in. One of the coolest aspects of zombies to this day, Everybody remembers No Man's Land. I, again, I think they should do more map startups also similar to this. Maybe not where you're just in one room, maybe where you have to like go through a tunnel or something and do a couple things. And they're that even stronger now. Realizing there is no way out of here other than getting game ended, there is a teleport pad waiting to be used. Well, you escaped, but wherever it is you are, you can't breathe. And you you can't have to make a rush to a PSU like, in order to get oxygen. Once you yeah. get your bearings, you realize that now you are on the moon, and it is all going downhill from here. When you scramble over to your PSU and equip it... I will have to say, and I think Moon B01 really gave that sense of ambient, of like, oh my gosh, like, I'm distant from everything, that like, dark space horror type of feeling. BL3 Moon really just made it look pretty, and I think... I actually just like the BL3 moon better than BL1 because when you go back and play BL1s here, just notice how every single thing on your screen here is gray. All Everything. the sound around you is completely drowned out. Not yeah. only does Moon spook you, but it takes away your sense of but hearing. But BO1 nailed the gravity and the sound. I will One of your core fundamentals as a human being for survival. And it is suppressed yeah. heavily in pursuit of Richtofen's grand scheme. The zombie groans are extremely faint now, to the point where you won't hear them until you feel and hear that thud of your suit as a maggot sack I swipes know, at you. You're yeah. caught off guard, unable to hear. Don't let that happen shortly after, or else Griffin Station will be your cold grave. Space doesn't have any sound as it is, so if you find yourself outside the station with no helmet on, you will hear the depths of nothingness that the ever-imposing vacuum of space ensures you wallow in. You see, there is no map ambience, no scary bangs, crashes, or creaks to make you look around with concern. Moon makes its presence as a horrific map known by doing nothing with its ambience. It's just you, the zombies, and however far out you can gaze in the abyss of space. Leading to it's also just the perfect area for a climax of a story. Like, what could be bigger than the moon? 
Literally. The layers of isolation and paranoia creeping up on you. All you can hear when you remove your helmet outside is your character gasping for air with a dull yet oddly calming voice from your suit telling you to put your helmet back on. Because, I mean, to be fair, why would you take it off in the middle of space, you dummy? And it's also mad to think that, like, the first map in this game started off in a movie theater and you end on the freaking moon. Like, you, you have to give that credit. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah, and, like, the, the announcer and just, like, how you feel like, oh, my gosh, like, it's over, you know? With Griffin Station being located on the moon, this makes for a truly dangerous, drab, and ominous setting for a zombies map. And we can't Which is why I'm so impressed that Leviathan is also incredible, because it takes everything from Moon and does it even better, in my opinion, and also with a really cool storyline too. Oh, that it is one of the most ambitious too. So an example of realizing how stranded and deserted you are on Moon, and one I've always found scary, and you know I still do, is to head downstairs from the moon's starting room. And if you look at the map, you'll see nothingness. It's all know. space, an infinite void just waiting to suck you in. And I think that's the point. If you ever go outside of the map in theater mode on this map as well it's freaky you could just go for miles outside of the map and it'll just keep going and it's just nothing and nothing upon nothing and you're just like oh my gosh why is this here well you realize you're completely stuck here there yeah. actually is nobody here at least on the other maps you're on a planet where other people existed on, <laughs> I but know, here right? on the moon you're all by yourself you're, a phrase that carries much here. more weight behind it than it does for any other zombies map yeah. then that gut punch happens that funny feeling if you will the i really am screwed kind of thought pierces into you that is what moon does so well this realization yeah. of infinite loneliness makes your gut sink into the pits of the nether it's as bleak as it is fascinating and the closest i've seen a map achieve this other than moon is none other than nocturne and totem it's like going full circle with both maps sharing the same theme of hopelessness and despair in one map you're still which is why it's such a great climax for bo1 because in bo1 as well in the final dlc they also added in noct varukt and shinonuma and darice which was just phenomenal Earth, just far away from any kind of help where no one can save you and that way it has a more realistic feel to it and the other you're not even on earth and there is literally no way anyone can save you it's a really unrealistic situation yet they both deliver the same feeling it's oddly poetic the aesthetics of the map are i would say abandoned sci-fi if anyone hasn't already made that up then i have just now griffin station is just as desolate as that's that's literally the the two words to describe Black Ops Zombies. Surf to right the moon there. itself, with its room filled with basic metal plated flooring, accompanied by lots of terminals and computers, with little blinking, beeping, and booping lights. The vibrant perk machines lit up around the map fit the visuals seamlessly, adding a cosmic layer to them just by gazing at them in this context. Yet, it's all so empty and gloomy looking at the same time. Now, obviously, no one here is maintaining Griffin Station like they should be. It feels like something out of an intense galactic sci fi, but a feeling of this place being long forgotten and the loneliness in the air grabs you by the balls. The colors are bright, but not vibrant. The rooms and tech are faded and washed out, playing to the abandoned field of Griffin's. Also, it's interesting because this map added Mule Kick, which then also added Mule Kick back into the other maps. And it's funny because like Mule Kick is probably the one perk I just don't see how it fits at all on the moon. Like how does a perk about donkeys and holding an extra gun fit on the moon? And a lot of people did not like Mule Kick on launch as well. Station. It's almost that. as though the place people is decaying, with the colors evaporating and withering. A certain area of Moon that has always stood out to me is the Biodome. It's a really interesting room, and definitely heavy on the sci-fi. This large area is filled with rocks and foliage, a contrast to the wasteland of the Moon. However, it carries a hollowness with it. When you realize how, I guess, out of place and artificial it seems, it's a dark area lit up with lights of the bounce pads, creating this dim, zombie-filled globe of sorts. It's like this really weird mood lighting. The Zeds can be seen emerging from the shadows, the bushes, and from behind the rocks as they're beaming eyes are the first things you spot. It's crazy, to say the least, and manifests a jarring feeling in you. And despite it being so big, you can actually get caught off guard at any moment. If we're talking about POIs on this map, then I should probably have mentioned the Moon Pyramid device by now. A surreal metal obelisk type- Like, Moon is really the map where it, it- there is a massive contrast between Moon and Kino in terms of, like, Moon is really the map that started the fantastical story of zombies. Uh, it got people super intrigued as well. I remember seeing the Moon Easter egg all over YouTube and stuff, and everybody was was like super excited about it and i think they did a great job however like yeah it really went away from that world at war scary ambient sort of type of story towards let's just go all out and i honestly think that it's one of the few stories that it ended up actually working a in structure that towers over you in the power room with menacing evil radiating off of it it is really hard to ignore as it's very eye-catching and feels very out of place the yeah. weird strange markings on it feel so odd that it ignites that fight or flight sense again or at least it did for me it taps into that this map connects all of the lore right from the beginning right in Doris, this is where richtofen touched the, this device the literal mpd and became crazy and it's just 
it, it via one story is literally fundamentally written so well like, yeah of the unknown again which so is something cool. that black plus one has done so well up to this point and is still delivering now once you look at the mpd you can't really look away for some reason moon's aesthetics are up there with some of the scariest zombies maps today maybe yeah. that's a controversial opinion but it's one i hold near and dear to me i'm gonna make the comparison I, to mark again and say like that i said bo1 does bo3 does not go at it with the same thing it bo3 is again more about talking about the fantastical story and not setting up the ambience where I would say BO1's moon, like with this shot right here, it's freaky, man. It's like foggy and stuff on the moon. And you're like, bro, I like if it's literally just you. you it know? conveys so much whilst not showing so much. Exactly. Okay. I don't need to tell. explain any further about how alone you must feel on a place like the freaking moon, nor how yeah. deep and vast the infinite void we call space actually is. So let's talk about Griffin Station's inhabitants. First off, the zombies designs in this map are interesting. You can really see how pale they are from presumably being on the moon for some time, decaying and wasting away, but also from how painfully cold space is. They look like they've suffered from having no oxygen for their withered bodies. Their veins seem to stick out, deoxygenated, a blue color, which is a morbid contrast to their bitterly cold, pale skin. The zombie models like in not- the veins as well in that zombie's arms. Ooh. Only moon, but Black Ops 1 as a whole are so detailed in the way that they show off the effects of the environment taking a toll on these decaying bodies. From the bloody trench coats of the massacre at the Pentagon in 5, to the iced over flesh of the zombies that are present in Siberia, aka Call of the Dead. Moon shows the shriveled, deoxygenated body- Yeah, Black Ops, I definitely think, has some of the best models in all of zombies, for sure. Because in BO3, they started getting all like super like crazy like the keepers and the apothecans and stuff but like this is where it was just like grotesque body horror for sure these that are stone cold from skin or yeah. like thereof to bone there is also another zombie, one which we can't actually see. Or should I say, we can see it, but not underneath what it's wearing. I am of course referring to our jump scaring, perk stealing, and forever exploding the zombie Space astronaut. Man. Yep. This bro. Don't hack the excavators while this guy's around, though, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, because that'll happen. This guy. The astronaut yeah. is one of those things that used to make me leap out of my socks. And I think a big It's so sad because a lot of people don't know that in Black Ops 1, it had a feature to show your friends gamer tags. And so sometimes it'd show a gamer tag of a friend that like hasn't been online in like four or five years. And you're just like, dang, man. But in BO3, they changed that to just being the names of the developers at Treyarch, which is pretty cool. The reason for that is the classic yet forever effective use of your mind imagining a monster. An evil you don't want to think about, but can't do anything but that. All we see is a strangely limp body inside of this lifeless space yeah. suit. It's uncanny for sure. It slowly but surely waddles They never describe who's actually in the suit. It's very interesting. We, to this day, will never know way over to you, with loose enough movements to be a zombie, but not as sporadic as the, the normal zombies we see in Black Ops 1. It's oddly calm and collected, not too dissimilar from George Romero, but yeah. unlike him taunting you from across the map, the astronaut is a silent predator. He's easy to outrun, but once- He is a silent predator, and what also sucks is that he literally gives you no reward, which is so bad. His only reward is that he'll blow up and take out some zombies. If you lose sight Great. of him, you have no good way of knowing <laughs> where he is until a round yeah. or two later, you're on your way to get a perk, and then- he grabs you, pulls you in, and gives you a good old bash with his noggin. This puts you to extremely low health, and teleports you to a random spot around the map, leaving you vulnerable and confused with one less perk to help you. All it's yeah. going to take is one hit from a zombie to connect with you whilst you're getting your bearings back, and that is it. You, you are... Done. You can get rid of the track <laughs> quite easily, but it will always be back. Also, much like George Romero, yeah. and when it does come back, it'll be ready to slowly chip away at you, perk by perk. Rest I mean, I do like in BO3, they have dead wire, you can just instantly shoot him, take him out, because on BO1, bro would literally become invincible past a certain round. Like, you would just not be able to take him out. There's no, like, double pap or anything, not even with the wonder weapons, you just literally invincible. Sure, the amount of jump scares I've had from no. this guy that made my ass Too clench many. hard enough to grip a golf ball is seriously counting. Well said. Well they said. They aren't even cheap for <laughs> yeah, The suspension well ramps said. up as the minutes tick by, well, you haven't seen the cosmic perk collector. He is anywhere and everywhere. So you'll need to think twice about walking through those doorways. The Moon Man brings a feeling of something like the film It Follows, in the sense of no matter where you Legit. hide or how far you're running Griffin Station. Hell, even the oh whole Moon, my it would always know exactly where you are. But yes. I'm guessing the powers of some sort of supernatural insight and will continue to be hopping towards you. It doesn't need to rush because at some point it'll get you. Gordon will reach you. <laughs> who the frig is Gordon, bro? Now anyone who played Moon at some point must have wondered, what are we doing here? Completing Richtofen's yeah. grand scheme is what we're doing. The See, that's the thing. It, like, the people that ask, what are we doing here? Those are the people that enjoyed maps like Kino and just loved the ambience and understood that. But then when they're on the moon, they're like, what, what is happening? And it's like, you can't really explain it to them unless you explain the whole storyline, right? Which... Again, that's where literally you could already see right at the end of BO1 and into BO2, the, 
the, there were separate people that like zombies. The people that like the OG stuff, the people like the, the fantastical stuff. Through the usual zombie stuff. Until you get back to the MPD and flip that switch. And up she rises. Samantha yeah. Maxis. The very yeah, because like imagine seeing this and having no idea about anything Call of Duty zombies. You'd literally just be like, what in the world is Call of Duty up to? <laughs> well, we heard the tragic cries of as her world changed forever in the Reese back in World War. Like, the girl no who lost clue. those dearest to her. The girl that swore to kill them. Kill them all. Yeah. Okay, so how did she even get here? She actually stumbled into the MPD herself when her and her dad, Ludwig Maxis, were trapped in the Dury's teleporter. Maxis ended up game-ending himself and Samantha wound up at the moon, where she then got spooked and got herself trapped in the MPD. She was corrupted under the influence of the Dark Aether from this ancient device. And that was the moment Samantha Maxis became an angel of death. She now had yeah. the omnipotent powers we've known from the previous maps and take the corruption from the Dark Aether, then mix in the dead daddy issues from earlier, and now all she can feel is rage. That's when she sends zombies to overrun the scientists at Griffin Station. So all the bloodstains you see in this map are all Samantha's doing. Okay, now you've released yeah, her and she's towering above been. you, holding her teddy bear calling card, which I'm sure you know by now holds a lot of weight and significance throughout zombies. Her and yeah. Richtofen end up switching souls, with Richtofen taking control of the zombies as a result. And Samantha's quotes to the zombies from Richtofen's body show how far gone she is at that point. Shout out my boy Rad Austin, miss this man. Once Richtofen takes the reins for the Zeds, all their eyes turn blue, showing the shift in power, and he even becomes the announcer, something which at this point has only ever been Samantha. This and everything that happens in Moon also sets up the events of Black Ops 2 Zombies. At the end of the Easter egg, rockets are launched, and they shoot directly towards Earth. All you can do is sit back and watch the place you called home, the place you needed to go back to, be completely shattered as the rockets explode. Fragments of the world float around after the huge cracks through it begin to disperse. What was once a natural green and blue planet has now took on the form of a fiery hellscape of a molten rock that you do not... Zombies Chronicles 2 right there. That's transit right there. Not one to find yourself on <laughs> your world really has shattered before your eyes, and now you have to sit with that. That silence of the moon, of space, of the void, throws out its arms to make sure you can't escape it. And that deep feeling of dread, once again, really sinks in more. The impact of that silence hits harder now. The game doesn't end either, and nothing much really happens to take your mind yeah, away from it. Yeah, because your... not only are you fully alone on another planet, there's no other planet now, at least from what we knew at this point, without the knowledge of transit, that had any more life form on it you were truly alone at this point you know? the world has just been annihilated by you and now you have to sit with it yeah makes you me think just... like maybe they did just want to end the zombie storyline right there like a lot of people still think bo1 is just collectively ended pretty much itself right there. across the horoscope you know? combining themes of crippling loneliness and yeah. debilitating dread not too far yeah. off from something like knock and totem except it ramps up the feeling of isolation to its extreme on a more cosmic scale you're witnessing the thick atmosphere of the void and the small blip that griffin station is in it that place feels just as lonely as the moon itself so seeing that presented in the abandoned sci-fi theme i mentioned earlier is really interesting to me the tragic tale of samantha and maxis from doris weaves its way into this too which is a nice touch the dread dawns upon you fast once the earth is blown to smithereens and the constant nothing Jet engine testing, bro. They were freaking teasing the jet gun right on Moon, bro. Come on. Keeps your mind focused on <laughs> space and the universe That's goes on mad. as if nothing happened. And there you are, now in a worse situation than you started in, all by yeah. yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, that is the Black Ops Zombies Iceberg by Exceptional Gamer. This was a phenomenal video. Absolutely go and check this man's out. Incredible. This is the horror of Black Ops Zombies, baby.